Ever seen a bow with strange oval-shaped wheels at each end, connected by multiple strings? This is a compound bow. By contrast, the more familiar recurve bow is nothing more than a string on a stick with the tip curving away. But when it comes to power, the compound bow can deliver more force than a recurve bow. And here's something interesting. Just before releasing the arrow, an archer using a compound bow needs far less effort to maintain full draw than an archer with a recurve bow. Let's understand why. Bows are among the earliest mechanical weapons invented by humans. By harnessing the elastic properties of wood, early civilizations stored potential energy by bending the bow and releasing it through an arrow. From ancient history to modern times, bows have relied on this same fundamental principle. But in 1966, Hollis Wilbur Allen revolutionized archery by inventing the compound bow. Unlike traditional bows, it uses a system of pulleys and steel cables to generate more power. In a recurve bow, drawing the string requires gradually increasing force, almost in a linear fashion. This force is called draw weight, and the distance you pull the string back is the draw length. When fully drawn, the bow reaches its maximum draw weight, measured in pounds. For example, a 45-pound bow requires 45 pounds of force to pull the string to a standard full draw length of 28 inches. However, even if you can't pull a recurve bow to full draw, you can still shoot an arrow, just with less power. A compound bow, on the other hand, works differently. The draw force gradually increases, peaks, and then drops significantly at full draw, thanks to its cam system. This drop in force is called let off. For example, a 70 pound compound bow with 80% let off means that at full draw, the archer only holds 14 pounds of weight instead of 70. This is the compound bow's biggest advantage. The archer can hold and aim for longer with minimal effort, allowing for greater precision. However, to benefit from this let off, the archer must pull the string all the way to its full draw length. When selecting a compound bow, ensure the draw length matches your arm length for a proper fit. Before diving into how let off works, let's first explore the key components of a compound bow. The central frame of the bow is called the riser, usually made from machined or cast aluminum, providing strength and stability. This part is the grip. Attached to the riser are the limbs, made from carbon fiber or fiberglass composites. These limbs fit into limb pockets and are secured by limb bolts, which can be adjusted to modify the bow's draw weight. At the end of each limb, there are cams, which are oval-shaped pulleys made of machined aluminum. These cams control the bow's power and let off, making them a crucial part of the compound bow's unique performance. The main string, known as the bow string, is what launches the arrow. A small loop called the D-loop is attached near the center of the bow string, marking the spot where the arrow is knocked. The D-loop also provides a secure point for attaching a release aid, which helps the archer draw the string without slipping. There are also additional strings called bus cables, which connect the cams to the limbs. A component called the cable slide moves these cables out of the way so they don't interfere with the bow string or the arrow's path. To reduce excess vibration after a shot, a string stop is used, preventing the bow string from oscillating back and forth and minimizing noise. Another essential part is the arrow rest, which holds the arrow in place and ensures a straight, accurate shot. For aiming, a small ring called a peep sight is embedded in the bowstring. When the bow is drawn to full length, this peep sight aligns with the shooter's eye level, aiding in precision. For even greater accuracy, a bow sight can be attached to the riser. This sight typically consists of multiple adjustable sight pins. Each can be calibrated for different distances. Additionally, small rubber-like objects called string silencers are attached to the cables and strings, helping stabilize their motion and further reducing noise. To enhance stability, a counterweight called a stabilizer is often mounted at the bottom of the riser. This reduces vibration when the arrow is released, making for a smoother and more controlled shot. Finally, the quiver can also be attached onto the riser. Every time a small force is used to control a larger force, mechanical advantage is at play. The first compound bow achieved this advantage through a pulley system. Mechanical advantage often involves a trade-off between force and distance. 
meaning that by increasing the distance over which force is applied, we can reduce the amount of effort needed. A simple pulley system allows us to apply less force by pulling the string over a greater distance. For example, in a single pulley system, moving an object by one unit requires both sides of the string to contribute one unit each, meaning the total pull distance is two units. Adding another pulley increases the force advantage to a 4 to 1 ratio, meaning four times the force can be applied while requiring four times the pull distance. This principle can be observed in the first compound Bose pulley system, which provided a similar 4 to 1 mechanical advantage on each limb. However, this does not mean the bow is four times more powerful. The key limitation is the archer's draw length. With a pulley system, a full draw can be achieved because the force is distributed over a longer distance. Without it, an archer could only pull one-fourth of the distance, meaning the limbs would bend by the same amount. As a result, the total power of the bow remains the same, regardless of whether or not the pulley system is used. If the power remains unchanged, why use a pulley system at all? The answer lies in efficiency. Traditional bows rely on large bending distances to store energy. This causes the bows to waste some energy carrying their own weight. However, advancements in materials like fiberglass and carbon fiber composites have allowed for stronger and more efficient limbs that can store significant energy, even in smaller movements. By incorporating a pulley system, the compound bow extends the small bending movement to a full draw length, allowing the archer to utilize all their available muscles for a more comfortable and controlled shot. Compound bows are not more powerful because of their mechanical advantage, but because of the efficiency that comes from stronger materials. And if you enjoy diving into how things like this work, then you'll love today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is a learning platform that makes tricky topics in math, science, and engineering way easier to understand. Instead of long lectures or heavy textbooks, you get hands-on lessons that are super visual and interactive, so you actually see how things work as you learn. They've got courses on everything from simple machines and electricity to black holes and artificial intelligence. It's a great way to build real problem-solving skills and get better at thinking through things like an engineer or scientist. And the best part? Brilliant helps you build a powerful daily learning habit. Just spending a few minutes a day keeps your brain sharp. It's like a workout for your mind, but actually fun. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash quasared or scan the QR code on screen. Or you can click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Modern compound bows have evolved beyond the simple pulley system of the first compound bow, now relying on cam systems for enhanced performance. Unlike regular pulleys, cams are designed to provide varying displacement throughout their rotation. Each cam in a compound bow features two sets of cam profiles, one controlling the bowstring and the other managing the cable system. The bowstring wraps around the outer cam profile, and as it is drawn, it rotates the cam, which in turn winds up the bus cable on the inner cam profile. The mechanical advantage of a cam system comes from the ratio between the inner and outer cam radiuses. For example, if the outer cam radius is three times the radius of the inner cam, the inner cam pulls the string at one-third the rate of the outer cam, creating a 3 to 1 mechanical advantage. This principle is similar to a simple lever system, where the mechanical advantage remains constant when using circular cams. However, cams allow the mechanical advantage to vary throughout the draw cycle. A higher mechanical advantage reduces the draw weight, while a lower mechanical advantage increases it. During the middle of the draw, the bus cable winds up more, causing the limbs to bend further. Near full draw, the cam shifts to a higher mechanical advantage, reducing the effort needed to hold the bowstring. This is what creates the let-off effect. Essentially, more force is applied early in the draw, so that less force is needed at the end. In most designs, the inner cam can be adjusted to fine-tune the draw length and let-off of the bow. Different cam profiles produce varying force curves, and choosing the right one depends on personal preference and shooting style. In terms of cam system, this kind of cable arrangement with two symmetric cams is called a twin cam or dual cam compound bow. A variation of this is the binary cam system, where two equal length cables directly link both cams, keeping them synchronized. 
The single cam system, by contrast, has a single working cam on the bottom and an idler wheel on top. Lastly, the hybrid cam system uses two asymmetrical cams, one managing the bus cable and the other connected by a control cable to keep them in sync. For those wondering why the peep sight and sight are positioned above the arrow, even though the arrow is meant to hit the target aligned with the sight, it's due to projectile motion. Like any thrown object, an arrow follows a curved path because of gravity pulling it downward. If shot perfectly horizontal, it would land below the intended target. To compensate for this, compound bows provide a slight upward angle between the peep sight and the scope. When aiming, you align the peep sight with a sight pin and the target. The specific sight pin used determines the bow's angle. Lower pins create a higher upward angle, allowing the arrow to travel farther. This is why the lowest sight pin is set for the longest distance, while higher pins correspond to shorter distances. Each pin is carefully calibrated. For example, if the closest target is 10 yards, the top pin is used. If the arrow lands below the mark, the pin is adjusted downward. And if it lands above, the pin is moved upward and keeps adjusting until it hits the exact spot. Left and right deviations are corrected by adjusting the sight accordingly. With proper distance estimation, using sight pins ensures consistent accuracy when shooting. While compound bows are powerful and precise, there's something undeniably cooler about traditional bows. They are pure, raw, and don't rely on a complex system of pulleys, cables, and sights. Just skill, instinct, and years of training. It's archery in its purest form, where every shot is a test of patience, focus, and strength. Mastering a recurve or longbow takes dedication, but that's what makes it so rewarding. While compound bows make things easier, there's pride in hitting your mark with nothing but your own skill. What do you think? Do you prefer the challenge of a traditional bow or the high-tech advantage of a compound bow? Let me know in the comments. If you're looking for someone to help bring your ideas to life, or if you're interested in sponsoring a future video, feel free to reach out. You'll find my contact info down in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.